what's up youtube it's your girl cindy j and i'm back with another video it is currently june 17th of 2021 one day after i have passed my aamp certification exam to be a family nurse practitioner i want to thank everybody who sent me a form of congratulations whether it's been through text dm email card words all of that kindness and support is much appreciated this video here is about how i pass my boards what study tips i have for you all because i want you all to be in the same exact position and get this great feeling of what it feels like to pass your certification exam whether you're on a financial crunch a time crunch i promise what i did is reasonable and you can do it so stay tuned for this new video enjoy this fresh content i hope you enjoy the watch all right, YouTube, now that I'm a little bit more comfortable, I can talk about how I studied. And where are all my other? Now I can talk about what I did to study. I got my books right here, all my resources and tips right here in my brain and, on my, and in my notes. So I'm not gonna forget anything. And I'm excited to do this video, you guys. It's so excited passing. Y'all are gonna feel this excited and amped just like me when y'all pass it. So just just watch this video. I got some good tips for y'all. Very easy, very quick. Let me start out with a couple things that you guys do not need to do. And I told this to all my classmates and the people who've asked me since they found out that I passed my board. The biggest mistake you can make when trying to study for boards is trying to utilize too many resources. And this is definitely what I did. So it was about two weeks or so before graduation. It was very close before graduation when we all got our emails from whether it was the AAMP or ANCC. We got emails from those certifying bodies about two weeks before graduation that we we could schedule our boards. For me, I scheduled, I wanted to do it as close as I could to graduation date. Like I wanted to take boards as fast as possible. So I ended up scheduling boards about five weeks after my acceptance to schedule email was given. Gave myself about five weeks to study. Did I study the full five weeks? Definitely not. It was just impossible with work. I had graduation trips that I had planned well in advance that I wasn't missing and just life hit. So no, I did not study every single day during that five week period. I had already bought so many books. So the books I bought were, I'm, I'm gonna show y'all the books that I bought right here. The first book I bought was Leak. This was my baby, y'all. You can see I kinda got all the stuff going on all those highlights okay well that's the questions in the back but yeah i got a lot of highlighting going on she was pretty i i used her a lot this was my girl she was really good to me during my studying process i had this book brown and dumpy I had her, we were required to buy, to purchase this as part of our adult health rotation, our first clinical rotation. Our instructor required that we buy this book and it's nothing but practice questions, practice questions, no content. This uh, is something we were required to purchase and I started my studying with that book as well. I bought Fitzgerald. This is another popular one, the popular study tool that people use to study for their FAMP board. FAMP, FMP boards. Um, yeah, it also has content and questions. More than 2,300 exam style questions. Uh, that's a lot. Um, content and questions. And then this is another resource we were required to buy during our adult health rotation, our first clinical course. This is Hallie so she has a clinical guidelines um, and primary care resource and this is nothing but like bullet points charts um it's broken up by systems and yeah the disease processes the most common primary care disease processes that you would see based on systems it's just content it's no questions it's not really a study tool but i was trying to utilize it in my studying i don't know why i chose of all the primary care books we have, I don't know why I chose that, I guess because it has like bullet points. The point of the matter is of those four books that I was going to try to use to study for my FMP boards, I only use one of the four books. And so my main thing is do not try to overuse 
resources because you're going to get yourself caught up. You're going to waste too much time trying to study one system from a million different resources. So just get you one really good book that you really like and stick with that. That is my main thing. Get you one really good resource that you really like. Utilize that for like 80, 90% of your studying and then use maybe a couple of other resources to like supplement, just give you a different format or a different way of like wording questions, but mainly study from one good tool. So my book was Leak. I ended up picking this as my main study tool. I went through Leak twice. And by going through that twice, I really didn't go through it twice. So <laughs> this is what I mean. When I say I went through Leak twice, I went through all of the systems, like the content section of Leak. I went through each and every one of the systems twice. Like I read it, highlighted, highlight, highlighted, highlit, and highlighted those sections like intensely, took my notes, whatever. So for the systems, I read them twice. The pharmacology section, I only read it once. For the gerontology and pediatric sections, I skimmed through those sections once. Bad idea, that was not smart. I was not super confident when taking the test. I will say gerontology, I pretty much catch on to that very quick. Most of my nursing background is in gerontology. Um, peds. Y'all, UPs, nurses, and you pediatric people, y'all are a blessing to society because peds is not my thing. There's so many different aspects of peds. And peds is kind of its own thing regardless just because you also have the systems, each from a pediatric standpoint, in addition to like milestones, immunizations, that kind of thing. Um, so peds is just a lot on its own. I only skimmed that section once. I wish I had read it and Gerald just as intensely as I read the systems portions of Leak like twice and did highlights for those sections. I just think it would have made me more confident when I was taking my test. At the end of the day, I did what I had to do and I got through fine, but I do realize that while I was taking the test, I was not as confident for some, for some measures when it came to like the gerontology perspectives and pediatric um portion so i recommend definitely reading those sections twice that i mentioned and the pharmacology section i wish i had read that twice and studied it just as intensely as i studied the systems portion um i i overall felt fine as i was taking the exam but i do realize there was a gap in my confidence once i started answering specific questions related to those particular topics went through leak questions twice so leak has 725 questions i think they're really good they really um reflected kind of similar question patterns and styles that were given on the test. I took the AAMP, I mentioned that earlier. It was 150 questions. There is a professional role section in LEAK. I did not read that section because it is not a part of the AAMP exam. The professional role section covers like ethics, research topics, um, role transitional like topics, things like that. And so that is not covered on the AAMP exam and so I didn't read it and any questions related to those sort of topics um, I kind of skipped over or actually I did answer the professional role section questions once but I mean I really didn't need to because it really was not covered in the AAMP exam so that was a, wait, a small waste of time but I really only answered it once so it wasn't a big of a deal. After my second time going through the lead questions any section that I got less than 85% of the material correct I re-skimmed those sections the day before my exam. I feel like I'm just rambling and so all over the place I'm sorry y'all. Um, but sometimes when it comes to stuff like this, it's better to just ramble and just say things as you think of them so you don't forget something. Or you might just say something that someone's like, oh, that's a good tip. So I'm trying to limit my rambling, but like I want you all to get as many good tips as I can give y'all. So sorry about that. Y'all might be wondering how, like, how did you get less than 85% on the section? Or how did you know you got less than 85% on the section? Well, the leak book comes with like a code, at least I bought mine brand new and so it came with a code. And so I got like a six month subscription to the online version, which came with the 
basically the full book and the questions but broken up by section it just made it really easy to follow i honestly feel like doing it online like having the app version and online version i was able to go through it faster than reading through the book i'm not sure why maybe because this book just is so thick so it's kind of intimidating to go through and you feel like oh i'm never gonna stop reading but having the app where it broke it up into sections made it look much more doable each day as i was studying so that's something to consider like if you like online stuff and apps and things like that um i feel like it definitely made it easier to swallow and create goals for myself each day and because the app split the questions up by system i was able to get a percentage each time i finished like a systems um section so like let's say renal had like 20 questions i would get my score at the end of doing the renal question section um i hope that made sense so yeah that's how i was able to see after doing it the first time and then the second time like what my score was regret like i said not reading the p's and gerald section because i wasn't as confident going into the exam regret not reading the farm section twice regret Okay, so I was trying to like test myself prior to reading and studying by doing questions before I actually did my readings. And honestly, that was such a waste of time and it did nothing but break my confidence. Trying to answer questions before I had finished my reviewing and studying. It just didn't make sense for me to do. So the first time I did the 725 questions, I did them before I even did the readings or the review. I was just trying to like see how much I knew. I did terrible. I was probably getting like, I was probably getting like 50%, 60% every time I was going through it before I had read the content and the notes that were given. So I said I regretted answering 725 questions first and then reading the sections. If I could go back, I would have just did all of my readings and then just started answering practice questions. I would have read as much as I possibly could and then did practice questions after I finished reviewing content and getting myself back with familiar with things that I have forgotten or just wasn't as confident on prior to reviewing. Something I did not like about Leek. So Leek had great questions. I like the content section. I like how everything was split up. I like the bullets. The clinical pearls are golden. The charts are really good. Um, overall, I would give leak a 4.95 stars i think it's a really good 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 resource to study for this exam however one thing i did not like about leak is the fact that um i did not like the rationales that's really big to me especially that's big to most nursing people um the rationales once you answer the questions are not the best it does tell you why the right answer is right but i don't like when the rationale does not tell you why the answer you picked is wrong. So that was my only complaint about LEAP. The questions are really good. They really reflect like what's on the test and that type of thing, but they did not do a great job of, oh my bad, you about that. But they did not do a great job of telling you why the answer you picked might've been the wrong choice. So that was my only thing. I was kind of finished up talking about LEAP. Okay, my second big resource that I chose this was something that was provided to us through our school was Board Vitals. I really like Board Vitals. It's kind of similar to UWorld to me. Um, if you use UWorld for your RN, your RN licensure, um, Board Vitals is very similar format. You can do easy, medium, or hard questions. You can do questions based on the system. You can do as many, you can like quiz yourself, do five or do one question at a time and get the answer. You can do 10 questions at a time and get the answers at the end of the quiz. You can do up to, I think 200 questions at a time is the max that it lets you do. The AAMP exam has 150 questions. So I would um, do a couple of practice rounds and like do 150 questions at a time. I probably only did that twice though. For the most part, I only answered like 20 questions at a time, gave myself time to read the rationales and then did another 20 questions. The ANCC exam is 175 questions. So it's good that Board Vitals allows you to do up to 200 questions because you can practice like giving yourself a practice test and just get in the mode of like sitting there and doing that many questions at one time so you're ready once you get to your exam. The best thing about Board Vitals was the rationales were super, super good. 
um, they told you why the right answer was right and then why the wrong answer was wrong. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but the exam format for the AAMP exam, that's all I can speak for because that's a test I took, it is no select all the apply, there's no pictures, there's no um, type-ins, there's no drop-down format where you place it in order, nothing like that. All the questions are strictly multiple choice, four options, you pick the best option. There might have been a few picture questions and leaks, so um, the AMP exam had no pictures at all. Um, I can't speak for the ANCC exam, I'm assuming that does have the select all the apply, um, reorder pictures, the different types of formats that you may see on a standard nursing exam. And so Board Vitals does emulate that. They do have reflections of those type of questions and Leak does have a couple of uh, pick the right order picture questions. So that's really good that you get all the different formats. The rationales were super good, but what I did not like about Board Vitals is, okay, I shouldn't say I didn't like this because I mean, I guess the harder the question, the more prepared you are per se. But I thought it would be best, like looking back on it, I think it would be best to just focus on doing the easy and moderate style questions. I thought the hard questions were almost just like too hard. I mean, there's a difference between being hard and tricky. Um, the AAMP exam, I would say it's hard, but the exam is not trying to trick you into picking a different answer from the right answer. It's either you know the right answer or you don't know the right answer. The hard questions for board vitals were tricky. It's like the question would induce you, I can't think of the word I'm trying to use, but it was just like trying to point you to pick a certain answer, but then after you submitted the question, it's like, oh no, this is wrong. This is actually the right answer because. So it wasn't that the information is just super hard and maybe just do a couple just so if you are gonna use board vitals. I mean, of course, do a couple of the hard questions to really test your knowledge, this kind of thing, but there's a difference. To me, those questions are kind of a waste of time because it was more like trying to trick you, like, haha, like this, <laughs> this is actually the right answer and you know, we but we wanted you, we were kind of pushing you to put, pick this answer. That was my, that's my perception of those type of questions on Blur Vitals. But the easy style questions and the medium style questions were, I thought they were excellent. They really reflected what was on the exam for me. So use Blur Vitals, I, I really liked it. I answered about 1500 questions total. I think Blur Vitals has like close to 2,000 questions on there. So I answered a, a very significant amount of them and I definitely liked it after after the fact. The final resource that I utilized, I'm gonna say this really fast because my camera keeps dying on me. The final resource that I utilized was the Latrina Walden Bronze Crash Course. Latrina Walden is, a, I believe she's doctorally prepared um, emergency medicine emergency nurse practitioner i don't know during her crash course she talked a lot about working in the er but i think she's probably had a bunch of different specialties over her entire nursing career so she has this course that comes with different audio packages i'm not a big audio learner but i was very nervous about taking this exam so i was willing to try anything this the bronze crash course was super cheap i think i paid $75 for like a month subscription. So to me that was doable in comparison to a lot of these audio courses where you're paying up to hundreds of dollars for, you know, a live session and whatnot. So I really appreciated the price point of it all. And it was really short. So I do not do well just sitting there for long time periods of time and listening to somebody talk. It was five one hour, about one hour long courses um, for Four of the videos covered like just everything, just general. She talked a lot about um, like bullets. I can't think of the term she used, but it was like um, buzzwords. She talked a lot about buzzwords and like if this word comes up on a question, then the answer is most likely this. So she did a really good job of keeping it concise. It was a crash course, so it was really fast, really bulleted. Um, really good pace i loved it it came with like 20 25 questions which i honestly thought were pretty bad they did not really reflect the test at all 
but the stuff that she actually talked about in her videos were good. So Nurse Ags, if y'all don't know who Nurse Ags is, she, I follow her on Instagram and I also listen to her YouTube videos. She was the one who recommended this course. So I appreciate you, girl. I love the course and it was very helpful. So yeah, that was the first four vids. And then she had one cardiac video, which I listened to like halfway. I wish I had listened to the cardiac video twice like I listened to the other four videos. But by that point in my studying, I was just so burned out and like I said I don't really like audios anyway but I thought they were really good really concise I liked it a lot of the points she made were on my test really good vibe all right so that's it for all the things that I used I hope I gave y'all some good tips I really think if y'all just kind of listen to what I said and use some good use a great resource you don't have to use the exact resources that I use but just kind of like mirror what I said don't try to overdo it and use look from too many different viewpoints and use too many different study materials to get prepared for your exam you don't need everything you've learned in school you went through the program you did all those assignments you learned a lot of information so you do not have to overdo it but you do need to put the work in you get what I'm saying? I hope you guys love this video. Something I'm thankful for today is my education and passing my exam. I'm super excited about what the future holds for me. I can't wait to get my first job and figure out what I'll be doing as a new grad nurse practitioner. Thank you guys so much for watching this video all the way through. Please like, comment, and subscribe for the vibe because I want you guys to want to continue this journey for me. I hope to catch you all in the next one and remember to always stay golden. Bye!